Sixth generation. That makes me a DNA Mormon. I'm the oldest of six kids and the oldest grandchild on both sides. And thanks to a little polygamy here and there, I have a huge extended family, <laughs> hundreds of Mormons. We all smile like this, except my Greek great-grandfather. I don't think he understood what all the smiling was about. He eventually went back to Greece, but he stuck around just long enough to mix his great, big, passionate Greek Orthodox DNA with Anglo-Saxon propriety, and that's why my boyfriends smile the way they do. <laughs> This show, I think, for many people, and you even said at one point in the show, you said that um, based on teachings and religious teachings, as we all know, could lead people to do things that may be extreme suicide, things like that. This is my contribution to helping end spiritual abuse in our churches, mosques, synagogues, and families. Spiritual abuse is any time you're told or shown. They use religion. Anytime an individual or group uses religion to justify telling or showing someone that they're not fully worthy of God's blessings and love. So when, if you buy into that, like you're excommunicated and you, you know, God doesn't love you, the people, you're not worthy anymore, what do you fill yourself with when you used to have a spiritual life? Well, there's drugs, there's sex, there's money. So I think there's a direct link between spiritual abuse and addiction. And this play very personally illustrates that. What about self-abuse? Masturbation? Uh-huh. Uh, well, uh, once in a while. I I didn't even touch myself the first 18 months of my mission. Self-abuse causes homosexuality. Then wouldn't everyone be gay? <laughs> no. <laughs> now, <laughs> have you ever been sexually abused by anyone other than yourself? <laughs> I thought it was very honest. I think that's the first thing you look for in any piece of work you're going to take on is a, a truthfulness, and it had that. And and then the whole idea of coming to terms with your religion or the, the religion of your birth at the very least was of interest to me. So thematically it had a lot of things about it that I thought were worth investigating. The whole New York section about what happens with him when he comes to New York was not in the show when I saw it. But then he told me about it. I said, you've got you've to put this on stage. This is the sort of second uh, part of the whole story of, of his, his growth and how he comes back to find himself. Come and get me, boys! But this time, I, I couldn't seem to hook up. So I went home and I went online and I found a group of guys who had been partying all night while looking for fresh meat. I arrived at their place in Chelsea at 5 a.m. They were doing a drug I'd only heard of. Tina, crystal meth. Something new to try. Before I knew it, I was doing rails on it. This seems to be right after you were living this, and now here you are performing it on stage. Was that kind of a mind screw up for you? Well, you know, I started writing the show about a year after my excommunications. It was very fresh, and in some ways I'm glad I free, it's kind of like I freeze dried those emotions. And even sometimes I look at the script and I go, wow, did I really feel that way? Wow, did that happen? So, you know, it's not like I'm reliving it necessarily on stage, but I did write it very soon after, and I'm glad I did, because it has all the nuance and the details that with time you forget. Um, and, uh, you know, I wasn't going to have a 31-inch waist forever, so I uh, <laughs> thought I'd get to it. Yeah, I know what that's like. <laughs> he needed to see how big I was before I filled out the W-2, so I pulled down my pants, nice, and got the job. Thank you, great-great-grandfather. <laughs> this is the story of the good fundamentalist kid who got married, had kids, has now choices, but has children. So I have my authenticity now. Yeehaw. <laughs> But I don't wake up with my children every morning anymore. Choose. It's the dilemma. So I, I have a lot of gay parents come and see the show, and, and it's their story too. But I'd rather be excommunicated a thousand times than have to repeat the day we told our children we were getting divorced. Is this a story that someday you will then say, this happened, this, is this something that they could see? I mean, that they, you Not know... Not right now. Um, you know, I think that they'll be proud of the story as a, as a kind of a you know, the difference it's making in people's lives. And it's my story of recovery, and I think they'll respect that. But uh, also they have an extraordinary mother who's uh, coaching them, and they're, they're just, but right now they know I do a play about how much I love them, that I sing my You and Utah song in it, <laughs> and it's about my excommunication for being gay, which they think is silly that I was excommunicated. But in time, they'll see it, but not right now. It was uh, Emily our daughter, our son, and me. I didn't know how to explain something like this. 
but I was still the dad, so I felt it was my duty to break the news. And they were too young to know everything, and yet I didn't want to blow it off like nothing was happening. I knew from experience what it felt like to have your parents break up. So I decided to make the incision swift and clean. Mommy and Daddy are getting divorced. My son's head shot to retention. He was only five, but he knew exactly what that meant. No! No? No! He ran to his room! Emily and I followed. He was in there praying. Please help me, Father. No, 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 no. They'll ruin my life. They'll ruin my life. No, 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 no. Uh, my ex-wife, Cena, and my former mother-in-law, who are major characters in the show, and my dad has seen it now, the, the full version. He saw an earlier version where I didn't deal with the escorting or the drugs and have that surprise ending. So this was a lot about, you know, the show. And, uh, well, it's been a... Well, this morning I talked to him before he saw the show, and I just let him know that, you know, I'm hard on him in the show, but I wanted to acknowledge how generous and awesome he is in my life. And so... Well, your dad could not have been... He, your dad's like the dream dad at this point. Yeah. I've seen parts of it in the past and earlier versions, but this is the time I've, first time I've seen the completed project. I was crucifying my father for not being perfect, so I didn't have to be accountable for my life and to justify doing whatever I want. Could I give up being right about my <coughs> stories, about <laughs> the church? therapists, the gay scene, Emily, her parents, my mother, and especially my dad. Could I stop being a victim? Something deep inside me said yes. And in that moment, I was free, free to choose. I had millions of choices. I was free to stop looking for my father's love and money in the penthouses of New York, free to stop self-destructing, and free to start cleaning up my messes. This displays the joy and the agony of being a parent, and the highs and the lows and the challenges, and uh, I'm proud of my son and his courage and his honesty and his integrity, and I'm just grateful to be able to come and support him and show him that I do love him with all my heart. Was it hard to hear some of the stuff that he was saying or thoughts that he was going through at the time? Yes, there's still parts of his life that I have problem with as a parent. Uh, it's, it's a unique thing to me, but as time has gone on, I've accepted him and his sexual orientation and the challenges that are inherent in that and I want him to know that I love him with no matter what and that uh, he's that sweet little boy that sang those songs and he's this growing man who has integrity and and who honors me and I honor him and I love him and his children so much you know it's amazing how my show has brought my father to me and has brought, brought so many people in back into my life through art it's just an extraordinary night for me. It's like a defining moment. Um, it's like the opposite of excommunication. It's like my homecoming. And I think my whole life will be defined. This is kind of a, a midway part for my life. So I, I couldn't be more, I, couldn't more, I have such a peace and a serenity about it. I feel like it gave a great show and that I hope we have a great run. So my dad was here and that's all that really matters.